The Canadian government has recently unveiled a significant increase in the Canada Pension Plan CPP disability benefit, bringing welcome relief to many disabled Canadians across the country. This substantial boost, which brings the maximum monthly payment to $1,638.67, represents a major step forward in providing financial support to those living with disabilities. The announcement from the Canada Revenue Agency CARE has sparked widespread interest and discussion among beneficiaries, advocacy groups and policymakers alike. The CPP disability benefit has long been a crucial lifeline for Canadians who are unable to work due to severe and prolonged disabilities. This program, which falls under the broader umbrella of the Canada Pension Plan, aims to provide a stable source of income to those who have made contributions to the CPP but can no longer participate in the workforce due to their health conditions. The recent increase in the maximum monthly payment reflects the government's commitment to addressing the unique financial challenges faced by disabled individuals and their families. To fully appreciate the impact of this increase, it's essential to understand the context and history of the CPP disability benefit. The Canada Pension Plan was first introduced in 1966 as a contributory, earnings-related social insurance program. It was designed to provide a measure of protection to working Canadians and their families against the loss of income due to retirement, disability, or death. The disability component of the CPP was included from the outset, recognizing the need for financial support for those who become disabled during their working years. Over the decades, the CPP disability benefit has undergone various changes and improvements. These modifications have aimed to better serve the needs of disabled Canadians while ensuring the long-term sustainability of the program. The most recent increase to $1,638.67 per month represents one of the most significant boosts in the program's history, reflecting both economic factors and a growing awareness of the financial pressures faced by those living with disabilities. To be eligible for the CPP disability benefit, applicants must meet several criteria. First and foremost, they must have a severe and prolonged disability that regularly prevents them from working at any job. The disability must be both severe, meaning it significantly limits the person's ability to work, and prolonged, indicating that it is long-term and of indefinite duration or likely to result in death. Additionally, applicants must have made sufficient contributions to the CPP -P while working. Generally, this means having worked and contributed to the CPP for at least four of the last six years, or three of the last six years, for those with 25 or more years of contributions. The application process for the CPP disability benefit can be complex and time-consuming. Applicants are required to provide detailed medical information, including reports from doctors and specialists, to substantiate their disability claim. They must also furnish information about their work history, education, and daily activities. The thoroughness of this process is designed to ensure that benefits are directed to those who truly need them, but it can also present challenges for applicants who may already be struggling with health issues and financial stress. The increase to $1,638.67 per month applies to the maximum CPP disability benefit. It's important to note that not all recipients will receive this full amount. The actual benefit an individual receives is calculated based on how much and for how long they contributed to the CPP before becoming disabled. The benefit consists of two parts of fixed amount that everyone receives the basic amount and an amount based on how much you contributed to the CPP during your entire working career the earnings-related portion. The new maximum of $1,638.67 represents the highest possible combined total of these two components. This increase in the maximum benefit is particularly significant given the rising cost of living in Canada. Disabled individuals often face higher living expenses due to medical costs, specialized equipment, and accessibility needs. The boost in CPP disability payments can help alleviate some of these financial pressures, providing recipients with more breathing room in their monthly budgets. For many, this could mean the difference between struggling to make ends meet and having a more stable, comfortable standard of living. The impact of this increase extends beyond the individual recipients. Families of disabled Canadians often bear significant financial and emotional burdens as they provide care and support. The boost in CPP disability benefits can help ease this strain, potentially reducing the need for family members to make difficult choices between work and caregiving responsibilities. Furthermore, the increased income can have positive ripple effects throughout local communities, as recipients may have more resources to participate in social and economic activities. It's worth noting that the CPP disability benefit is just one component of Canada's broader social safety net for disabled individuals.
other programs and benefits, such as provincial disability support programs, the disability tax credit, and various healthcare and housing supports work in conjunction with the CPP to provide a more comprehensive support system. The increase in CPP disability payments may affect eligibility or benefit amounts for some of these other programs, so recipients are encouraged to seek advice on how this change might impact their overall financial situation. The decision to increase the maximum CPP disability benefit to $1,638.67 per month is the result of various factors and considerations. One key driver is the annual cost of living adjustment, which ensures that CPP benefits keep pace with inflation. This adjustment is based on the Consumer Price Index CPI, which measures changes in the price level of a basket of consumer goods and services purchased by households. By tying benefit increases to the CPI, the government aims to maintain the purchasing power of CPP recipi recipients over time. Another factor influencing the benefit increase is the ongoing evolution of the CPP itself. In recent years, the federal government, in cooperation with the provinces, has implemented a series of enhancements to the Canada Pension Plan. These changes, which began to be phased in from 2019, are designed to provide greater income security for future retirees and disabled contributors. While the full impact of these enhancements will be felt over the coming decades, they reflect a broader commitment to strengthening Canada's pension system, including supports for those with disabilities. The increase in the maximum CPP disability benefit also comes at a time of heightened awareness and discussion about disability rights and inclusion in Canada. Advocacy groups have long called for greater financial support for disabled individuals, citing the unique challenges and additional costs associated with living with a disability. The boost in CPP disability payments can be seen as a response to these calls, acknowledging the need for more robust financial assistance for this vulnerable population. However, while the increase to $1,638.67 per month is undoubtedly welcome news for many, some advocates argue that more needs to be done to address the financial challenges faced by disabled Canadians. Critics point out that even with this increase, many recipients may still struggle to cover basic living expenses, especially in urban areas with high housing costs. There are ongoing discussions about the need for a comprehensive national disability benefit that would provide a guaranteed basic income for all disabled Canadians, regardless of their work history or CPP contributions. The implementation of the increased CPP disability benefit also raises questions about awareness and accessibility. Many eligible Canadians may not be aware of their entitlement to this benefit or may find the application process daunting. The CARE and Service Canada play crucial roles in disseminating information about the CPP disability benefit and assisting applicants through the claims process. Efforts to simplify the application process and increase outreach to potentially eligible individuals are ongoing, with the goal of ensuring that all who qualify can access this important support. For those already receiving CPP disability benefits, the increase to the maximum amount will be automatically applied. Recipients do not need to take any action to receive the higher benefit, as their monthly payments will be adjusted accordingly. However, it's important for beneficiaries to stay informed about any changes to their benefits and to report any changes in their circumstances that might affect their eligibility or benefit amount. The increase in the CPP disability benefit also has implications for long-term financial planning. For many disabled Canadians, the CPP disability benefit forms a cornerstone of their financial security. The boost in the maximum benefit amount may allow some recipients to save or invest more for the future, potentially providing greater stability and peace of mind. Financial advisors who work with disabled clients will need to take this increase into account when developing comprehensive financial plans. It's also worth considering the broader economic impact of this increase in CPP disability benefits. While the additional funds disbursed through the program represent a cost to the CPP fund, they also inject money directly into local economies across Canada. Recipients of the CPP disability benefit typically spend a high proportion of their income on essential goods and services, meaning that much of this increased benefit is likely to circulate quickly through the economy, supporting local businesses and potentially stimulating economic activity. The increase in the CPP disability benefit to a maximum of $1,638.67 per month also highlights the importance of ongoing policy evaluation and adjustment. As societal needs and economic conditions change, it's crucial that social support programs like the CPP disability benefit are regularly reviewed and updated to ensure they continue to meet their intended goals. This recent increase can be seen as part of this ongoing process of assessment and improvement. Looking to the future, 
the landscape of disability support in Canada continues to evolve. Technological advancements are creating new possibilities for workplace accommodation and independent living, potentially changing the nature of disability and work. At the same time, demographic shifts such as an aging population may increase the number of Canadians living with disabilities and relying on programs like the CPP Disability Benefit. Policymakers will need to consider these trends as they continue to refine and develop support systems for disabled Canadians. The international context is also relevant when considering the increase in CPP disability benefits. Canada's approach to supporting disabled citizens can be compared and contrasted with systems in other countries. While direct comparisons are challenging due to differences in overall social security systems, cost of living and healthcare provision, the move to increase the maximum CPP disability benefit to $1,638.67 per month positions Canada as taking steps to enhance financial support for its disabled population. Education and awareness about the CPP disability benefit and its recent increase are crucial. Many Canadians may be eligible for this support without realizing it, particularly those who have become disabled later in life or who have invisible disabilities. Community organizations, healthcare providers, and government agencies all have roles to play in ensuring that information about the CPP disability benefit reaches those who may qualify. This includes not only details about the benefit itself but also guidance on the application process and available resources for assistance. The increase in the maximum CPP disability benefit also underscores the importance of continued contributions to the Canada Pension Plan. For working Canadians, Understanding that their CPP contributions provide not only for retirement, but also for potential disability coverage can inform financial planning and decision-making. Employers, too, play a role in this system, matching employee contributions and helping to ensure the long-term viability of the CPPP. As with any significant change to social programs, the increase in CPP disability benefits may have unintended consequences that will need to be monitored and addressed. For example, there may be interactions with other benefits or support systems that could affect overall income levels for some individuals. Policymakers and program administrators will need to stay attuned to these potential issues and be prepared to make adjustments as necessary. The boost in CPP disability benefits to a maximum of $1,638.67 per month also raises questions about the adequacy of support for those who don't qualify for CPP disability but still live with disabilities that affect their ability to work and earn income. This includes individuals who became disabled before accumulating sufficient CPP contributions, as well as those with episodic or fluctuating conditions that may not meet the criteria for severe and prolonged disability. Addressing the needs of these groups may require different approaches or complementary programs. In conclusion, the increase in the maximum CPB disability benefit to $1,638.67 per month represents a significant development in Canada's support system for disabled individuals. This boost acknowledges the unique financial challenges faced by those living with disabilities and aims to provide greater security and stability. While welcomed by many, it also sparks ongoing discussions about the adequacy of support for disabled Canadians and the future direction of disability policy in the country. As society continues to grapple with issues of inclusivity, accessibility, and economic justice, the evolution of programs like the CPP Disability Benefit will remain an important area of focus. The recent increase is a step forward, but it also invites continued dialogue and action to ensure that all Canadians, regardless of ability, have the opportunity to live with dignity and financial security. As we move forward, it will be essential to maintain open channels of communication between policymakers, advocacy groups, and the disabled community to ensure that support systems continue to meet the changing needs of disabled Canadians.